So what is compensated shock? Compensated shock is the patient has vital signs that appears normal, but the vital signs are not sensitive indicator of shock or resuscitation. So the heart, the brain is perfused at the expense of other organs. So you have an occult hypoperfusion and you cannot detect that by vital signs. You got to get it from the pH, from the base deficit, and from the serum lactate level. They are very helpful in monitoring resuscitation. The patient may have a normal heart rate, blood pressure, adequate urine output, but the serum lactate may be 3. That is high. It should be less than 2.5. Some labs have it as less than 2. So that patient has occult hypoperfusion. Then you're going to use damage control first before you do your definitive care. The only time you're going to rod a femur if the lactic acid level or the base deficit is within normal. So resuscitation and normalizing the lactate level, you can do early appropriate care because you have an adequate resuscitation, the patient will be able to tolerate the nailing. Sometimes it's very hard to determine the extent of resuscitation if the patient fully resuscitated or the patient have compensated shock. It could be difficult to determine, so that's why you get the base deficit and the serum lactate level. Both are predictor of survival and are used to guide the resuscitation. So now the patient is under resuscitated, then what are you going to do? You're going to do damage control. How do you do stabilization? Well, you will decrease the trauma by initial stabilization, followed by stage definitive management. So if it is a pelvis, you will have sheet or binder, you will have traction, and please don't leave the sheet or the binder more than 24 hours on the patient. So the patient become stable, then we'll get the chest, abdomen, and pelvis CT. If the patient is unstable, you will do angiography and embolization. You will do external flexor for long bone fractures and splints for the forearm and for the humerus. There is no significant advantage of the external flexor on the femur more than skeletal traction unless the patient is already in the operating room. Typical scenario is a huge story about the patient. Don't worry about the details first. Check your serum lactate level and their base deficit. If it is high, then you're going to do DCO, damage control orthopedics. So you start looking for external flexors, and for humerus and forearm, you're going to put splints. You will want at least five days before definitive treatment, and that has to do with the inflammatory markers. Definitive treatment can be delayed 7 to 10 days for pelvic fractures and up to 3 weeks for fractures of the femur to change from external flexor to an IM rod. And in the tibia, it's about 7 to 10 days can be delayed to change from external flexor to IM rod. Just remember, in morbid obese polytrauma patient, there will be increased systemic complication with IM nails of the femur and increased ARDS and death. Also, patient with head injury, intraoperative hypotension increases the mortality rate.